when the restraints have been released, push up on your shoulder harness and carefully exit the ride. So, uh, but I, like I'll come out of a meeting and I will have a clean slate in my brain and I'll see Carmela and um, she'll have a lot late and she'll lay it out to me and I'll be like, damn, that's how I would have probably. And I'm thinking like, like that, that's how I would have laid it out too. Like, <laughs> we, 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 kind, we kind of vibe like that on that level of, uh, in terms of the, I think her actual psychology is, is much farther ahead than, uh, than the most like most people would would think if they just saw Carmela, they would they wouldn't they wouldn't realize that i don't think you know one thing she does and this is phenomenally old school and i love it is screaming during matches oh yeah, uh, yeah she, uh, she, you know that that's that, that's perfect carney that that's yeah. you know and people don't i i love i think it's hilarious when she, yeah, yeah. When, when she's yelling and screaming during matches she, she's oh, in there with with ria like that makes sense like that's yeah. That would, yeah. you, you know, it's it's brilliant. It, it's it's perfectly old school, I and mean, I don't know how many people notice that or appreciate it, but I just I think it's genius, honestly. Yeah, she she's she's like I said, she she picks us up fairly fairly quickly, and like she she gets a lot of the the little nuances. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Bianca. Man, Bianca, she's a fast learner, fast learner, very. Um, I texted her this a couple weeks ago and I was like, Oh, I think that, and I was like, in my mind, I didn't say this part to her, but I was like, I think I, I think I figured out why, like we vibe. So it's just that she is, she is so coachable. I can, I can explain something to her and, um, she'll, she'll catch on fairly quickly. And, it, you know, and maybe at first, maybe she didn't know kind of what I know or whatever, but like now now we've developed such a cool relationship that like she told Natty this a little while ago that like she's like if TJ tells me something and I don't understand it I'm just going to go do it anyway because he hasn't been he hasn't been wrong to me yet. he hasn't lied to me yet so I'll just keep listening till till other, until otherwise noted <laughs> so uh it's, 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 there's a lot of trust I but I think man I think she's um she's just one of those special pe- like athletes that it translates into what we do and her physicality is like, she's very physical and she likes being very physical in the ring. And like her matches look like that. Like I just saw her on Friday. I was asking her how, how her eye was doing. It was swelled shut. She was like, Oh, there's still this little bumpier and it kind of hurts here, but it's cool. And I was like, oh, if you say so, if yeah. you say it's cool, like I caught that heel in WrestleMania, both Jordan and I went, Ooh, Ooh. yeah, man. Like, and yet, and yet she, she, she's tough as nails. She just went on like that was, wow. <laughs> and there, and there's like a lot of cool things. Like she makes her own gear and like the ponytail, like it's all this unique, very cool stuff that, and, and then, and then she's, um, this isn't to take any slight at Bianca whatsoever, but then she's also on the main roster been in there with like, with all of our, all of our best women as well like and so it's been an awesome process of she's just been like she's just like going around like collecting from everybody and and it's so cool to see it and like and to see like again now like now when i see her for a match she'll have a lot of things laid out and it'll again meet my same kind of like ideologies and it's just so cool to see um but i have all the time in the world in the world for bianca Absolutely, and a a crossover star in this it's, it's a hell of a journey. Ronda Rousey. Ronda, man, I mean, it's it's that that first year, like that first match. I don't think anybody expected that match to be what it was. That uh, Triple H and Stephanie against Kurt Angle and Ronda. I think that match blew a lot of people's expectations out of the water. And um, yeah, Ronda, Ronda, that that whole year it felt like was on fire and I, I didn't work with her at first. I worked with her on her s- first time I really worked with Rhonda, I believe is the her second uh, match against Naya on pay-per-view. Uh, we were in California, but it, 
I it was one of those days again where I showed up with zero ideas, and then like and I had no ideas when we came to the, when I came to the ring, and it was the beginning of like nine, and I remember I'd, I'd never text Naya prior to this. I I I may have not worked with Naya yet either, mm. for the most part. And Naya sent me a text and just said, "Hey, do you have ideas for this match on Sunday?" And I think she might have texted me on Wednesday. <laughs> and I, said, I said, "I said, hey, let me watch your guys' last pay per view match, and see what I come up with," and. Um, I watched their previous pay-per-view match and all the, like, all kind of the little outline ideas I had in my head, they did in that match. <laughs> <laughs> the worst, the, the worst news you want to hear. I have nothing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do at, at that point. Like Rhonda was very good, but also very green. She's brand new. And so like, I'm like, Oh my God, what are we, what are we going to do? And I just remember being like, I saw Johnny, because uh, he was the producer of the first one. And I said, hey. Yeah. I said, I watched that Naya and um, a Ronda match you put together. It was awesome. And he's like, oh, he's like, thanks. And I was like, yeah, pff, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I just remember, like, we were by the ring. And uh, out of nowhere, it's just, so this is how this, this, is, I'll, this will be a good example. Because I'll be able to give you an example with, like, not, with not so much, like, generics i can give you a very specific example and then just like a million ideas pop from this but it was like remember Rhonda came to the ring and said that i think at this point she had done a she had done a crossbody to naya and the first one off the top rope mm. and now this time she wanted to do it to the floor mm. so so there was that and i had i said yeah no problem i had no naya naya's naya's I have I have all the time in the world for Naya too. I, I love Naya, but I was like, okay, cool, no problem. And I still didn't really have like a whole lot of laid out. And I was just trying to think. Like, obviously, I know the story here is kind of David and Goliath, but at the same time, Ronda's a badass too. So it's not. It's like it's like Goliath's got he's got some serious weapons here. David's yeah. got some serious weapons here against Goliath. So it's not it's not so much. It's not a total mismatch. Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> um, at one point, I just was standing by the ring apron, and I just thought, like, what if, what if Ronda got the arm bar and Nia pulled herself up? So Nia's on the floor, but Ronda's still on the apron, and Nia's still in the arm bar. So the only way to get out is she's got to rip Ronda off apron and then into the barricade. And then, mm. um, so I, I, I mentioned that idea. They both loved it, and then just like, uh, so this is where it's almost unexplainable. It's like I had no ideas. Then that idea. I, I say it, if they had not liked it, I would have almost gone into a panic of like, okay, I need to come up with something. I need something to spark here. And, but they liked it. And then all of a sudden, just like a million ideas come out. And that, then we have this match. And I just remember after the match, like, like Vince loved it. He, he, I remember he was, um, he, he was, he had a lot of praise for both of them after. And I, I don't remember, I, I can't even remember the other. So I remember one idea being, uh, Nia's going for a Samoan drop and Ronda on the second and Ronda dips down and ends up doing kind of like the sunset power bomb to Nia. Mm -hmm. Nia, uh, I remember like catches Ronda on a, on a cross body off the top. She does yeah. do the one to the floor, but the one in the ring, she catches it and either slams Ronda or Samoan drop. Like I remember we dropped some bombs in that match and it was awesome. Yeah. It was so yeah. awesome, but yeah. it, it starts from one spark. Uh, but yeah, man, that first year, like Ronda was, really on fire and i think it was taking a lot of people by surprise and then the the stuff with with becky and charlotte leading towards uh wrestlemania 35 and, and then the match itself it was that was that was all like that was the first time the women main evented wrestlemania like it was yeah. crazy it was yeah. so crazy so and, and now we've seen it again since so like it, like that is awesome to me <laughs> The home team's winning. Well, you know, and, and Ronda is in uh, a unique situation. The, the, I mean, the, the parallel is Ken Shamrock. Yeah. You, you know, and, and I love Ken to pieces. And yeah. and it's the same sort of thing. Like, the world's most dangerous man, the world's most dangerous woman, you know, coming into a completely, well, a related but an alien environment with yes. huge, huge, almost crippling expectations. And, it, and and exactly it, to, yes, and does, just because like just because they there are some similarities doesn't mean it's going to be a success. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it can, it can almost be it, a detriment. It, a detriment, yeah. I mean, because you've got such sky high expectations, and yeah, yeah, you can go in there and shoot, <laughs> yeah. but that's yeah. that's going to be a whole other thing. Then you, you know, it's. I mean, learning how to work from shooting can be, you know, it, it can be yeah. it can be tough. I agree. I agree. Yes, very true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other half of that coin there, you, you mentioned it, another heat magnet, Nia Jax. What, what, was, what, what was Nia like? So I think, like, I've, like I think, <laughs> I think Nia grew, grew a lot uh, working with me, I feel like. Like, a, the Nia, like, Nia, I saw, I saw a lot of change in Nia for, and I, not that there was not, I didn't think she was bad before a bad person before but i saw a lot of change and she, she i like for example the, uh they did a rib they did a rib one day um in during rehearsal where abyss who was another producer uh, very very good very detailed very uh one of the hardest working men in the world hurricane helms these are they're oh, coming yes. me i don't i don't want to leave anybody out i i hate them. <laughs> uh, but abyss in the ring in rehearsal one day uh we're at the thunderdome uh he got rolled up. Somebody rolled him up from behind and he was kind of embarrassed. And uh, I remember we were going over our match and Naya saw it and Naya like felt really bad. And she went over and like hugged Abyss and like, she's like, you guys leave him. And like kind of promo, like leave saying like, leave Abyss alone. And like, it, it just like, it was so awesome to see. And uh, Naya, Naya, I, I think I met her in NXT, but I didn't like know her. And, um, we, I really, I when I really, really started working with her was around the was during the pandemic. I worked with her a little bit before, but really the pandemic. And uh, again, so she's one of this is another one of those examples. Um, I'm driving to Orlando. We were at Amway at the time, the first Thunderdome. And I'm driving to Orlando, and uh. It was the match. It's Sasha and Bailey against Nia and Shayna, and at, at the conclusion of this match is where Bailey turns on Sasha. Mm. Uh, so I'm driving to Orlando, knowing like today's a big day. Like this is a big day. This is like I know how big this is for Bailey and Sasha, and I know, like I know how big the breakup is, which means I know the tag match is going to be really big too. It, it has to be, and so. But I'm driving there, but I can't be like, hmm. I think you can take a power bomb off the top rope and like I can't just go and start throwing people's bodies around and suggesting that they dive off towers and stuff like that. Um, so I remember I get there, we go to the, do the production meeting. I, I see Naya and she's like, TJ, I want to get power bombed off the ring apron today to the floor. <laughs> I was like, um, excuse me, what? What's that? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I want Bailey and Sasha to powerbomb me on the floor. So, well, okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, on my 90-minute drive from Tampa to Orlando today, um, I wasn't picturing you taking a powerbomb off the ring apron. <laughs> <laughs> you bring this up. Now that I know now that I know this is kind of like the ceiling, yeah. give me a minute because now i got to construct a bunch of things. <laughs> Yeah, man, like, uh, it, was, it was awesome. And she really wanted to go out of her way to do a good job in that situation. And during the Natty and Tamina stuff, yeah. Naya was a huge proponent behind the scenes of that whole thing. Um, Tamina, Tamina, that's her first championship in a decade. Mm -hmm. And she more than deserved it. And Naya was a big, big, big catalyst in that. Nat Nat Natty, Naya, and of course, Shayna as well. But uh, I mean, Naya, Naya, like they, you know, they're, they're, they're related. They, they know each other very well and all the putting together the matches, it would almost, they would almost like, I don't want to ex expose their stuff too much. They would almost like get in, get into fights, <laughs> but, but, but I knew what Naya was doing. The Naya was firing to Tamina is one of the nicest humans on this entire planet. Yeah. She is so nice. And I knew it. I, Naya was trying to get the mean side out of Tamina to show it on TV that night. Like, I knew what Naya was doing. I knew, like, to an outsider maybe just walking by, they might not get it. They might think Naya was a bully and this is a bad situation, but it, but it wasn't. 
and the, the proof was in the results in those matches. I mean, WrestleMania here in Tampa, uh, that day two, when Natty and Tamina against Nia and Shayna, the fans are chanting Tamina. A stadium is yeah. chanting Tamina. And that, like, man, that, that like, melted my heart. Yeah, yeah, getting her fired up and getting her over. I mean. <laughs> That's to Nia's credit, man. Uh, and, like, Nia, that last match she had with Shayna, she didn't she didn't think it was her last match she knew she she i knew she was taking a little bit of time off after that yeah and so in doing that she went out of her way to really want like shana to really take her out and yeah that, that that's a credit to her and, and same with the stuff with lana naya yeah. was naya didn't complain one time and she actually like i remember one time one finish it's gonna be like lana's supposed to just like do a quick roll up and and I was like, why doesn't she do like kept me in this position, then stomp me and then do this big pin? And like that's what we ended up doing. And like Naya could have easily just said, no, I just let her roll me up or, or whatever. You know, or actually, you know what? At one point maybe the finish was a count out. And I was like, oh, I'll just have her beat me. Something like that. It was crazy. Like uh, and I hope I'm not ruining Naya's bad guy on social media image because the real Naya is not that whatsoever. Yeah. When what fans think Nia is is not what Nia is at all. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, and, and that's interesting because Nia must, I, I think the parallel case is Big Show, you, you know, where it, it, it's, you're so big and so powerful and so dominant, it becomes a real tightrope, you, you know, because she could, she could, she could, she could no sell stuff and bury people, you know, or she can oversell. You know, and, and make herself look weak. So it, it's it's interesting because it must be like he like I'm 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 not Big Show size, and I gotta under I gotta sometimes you know when I'm working him, I gotta put myself in his shoes and think like it's probably not easy being this big and traveling and and like to your point, you gotta balance. How much do you sell or not, or how much do you give or take? And it's it's tricky. And and I also <clears throat> totally off off topic, except that you did mention Big Show. Uh, I mean, if he, he's phenomenal. The times I've wrestled him, phenomenal, phenomenal. Like, Wait, what, there's, what, what was it there's like a time better than him. Like, I don't know how you can be because he's. Phenomenal. Yeah, what what was it like working with Big Show? I mean, this is off topic, as you say, but he he was he was great. He was always out, went out of his way to like make sure <clears throat> he always wanted us to look good, and he wanted us to um, like he. I'm uh, the match where we win the tag titles with him. I remember like he wanted me like firing up on him, and <laughs> like he, it was it was. I remember he wanted to he he was beeling. He wanted to give me a big beal and stuff, and he just. But the truth is, so that's when we're uh, they're dropping the titles to us. They, but the truth is, in FCW, uh, two years prior, before uh, the match with Mayweather, he was coming and training a bit. Mm. And he doesn't know me for, I mean, he doesn't know me from anybody. It's not like I shake his hand. I say, Hey, I'm TJ. I'm from Calgary. I know Brett. Like, I don't say that. He just, meet, <laughs> he just meets a guy that's under six feet tall. That's under 200 pounds in FCW that he's probably, that he might, that he might've been told to ease his uh, concerns is at least okay at this stuff, but he doesn't know who I am, but he was so kind to me. He was so kind to me uh, in that training. And then later what, like, you know, he and Brett have a, great relationship it turns out they're good friends but i but that was i that wasn't what i used as like an icebreaker with a guy i have used it before as an icebreaker <laughs> but not, not not with not with this not with the big show who i probably thought in my mind i really needed it for all man so he's gonna be like big and crabby but he's not he's awesome man. I, he in fc like i said in fcw he was showing this guy titan uh a bunch of uh giant stuff basically and the difference between when Titan would do it to me and when Big Show would do it to me is like night and day, and and that's not an insult. Then it's just that Big Show is literally that he's just that good at, at that size, man. It's it's unbelievable. I uh, I saw him. He came one time and did NXT at Full Sail, and he wrestled Sheamus in a dark match, and uh, they just flown from overseas, and uh, he didn't phone it in. He worked hard as hell, man. Like, yeah, no, Big Show, Big Show's the man. You know, it's interesting because um, it, it kind of sparks a a story that I heard uh, on an interview with George Clooney, of all people, where George was talking about his aunt Rosemary Clooney, who was a very famous uh, singer, a lounge singer, Vegas act in you know fifties, sixties, and beyond, and and had a phenomenal voice. And he'd go, and he'd hang out backstage, and he'd watch her perform. 
NET, well, Auntie, why, why don't you sing like you used to? And she said, George, you reach a point where you just don't have to prove it anymore. You, you know, and, and I think, and I think that's really a mark of a of a vet and a, and a pro is that you know you you know you can do it, but you don't have to put it out there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to look at it, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we've got a request here. The boss, Sasha Banks. Ah, uh, a uh, big fan. Uh, my big friend, <laughs> I've, been, I've been friends yeah. with her uh, since NXT, but like we've been. Facebook friends like since like 07 or something. I don't know how. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I've, I've seen, I've seen her. I've seen like, I've just, I've, and a, and a lot of these women I have, like you could say the same about Becky. You could say, say the same about Charlotte and uh, Bailey is also a hundred percent on this list. Carmen, I really, I'm really a lot of these women, but Naomi and Tamina as well, truthfully. But, um, I've been there for a lot and I've seen a lot of her like coming up and seeing her improve and get better and get better and get better. And just, I don't know, maybe, maybe she just liked my style as a wrestler, but I remember she asked me an idea, like a lot, uh, I'm not a producer yet. I'm a talent and I, I end up getting hurt before her, uh, the, the match she had with Bailey in Brooklyn. But I remember texting and asking me like, Hey, do you, do you think I need to do this or can I do this? And I was like, well, actually it's it's more like it's more open world than you think you can do this 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 or none of it like anyway and i think we just have a good relationship in terms of that where we vibe and bounce ideas off each other like if i see something cool um that i think like that she would do i'll, I'll send it to her or vice versa she'll send me something and say do you think i can do this which my answer is always yes because i I'm not going to ever say no, like, let's try it. And if we can't do it, we'll find some variation that we can do. But um, yeah, she, she just, um, she's very much, and I don't think, I don't think it's much of a secret. She's very much on a quest to be the best. And um, so in that uh, she, she, so this is what I really like about the women across the board and, and speaking about Sasha and, and I mean, all of them, but this is the, this like brings it back to my attention is what I love about the women is they don't, they never phone it in. They're not, if they have four minutes, it's going to be four hard minutes. If they have two minutes, it'll be two hard minutes. If they have 20 minutes, it's 20 hard minutes. It's not, it's, it's, it's physical and it's, they're, they're putting their all into this. Yeah. And like, like even, there, there's footage of it. It will, it will at some stage see. But like, there's so many times I have to like go talk to the women while they're like in the makeup chair and they're like getting their lips done and and like they can't even they they can't actually talk. They just are <laughs> making noises, <laughs> trying to communicate. Like, <laughs> they, not everybody sees all the work that goes into into being a, a a woman performer in our world, man. It's a lot of work, and and I I see a lot of the work, and uh, yeah, something. There's some vibe there that like Sasha and I just really get along well I think I think that honestly I think there's a lot of similarity similarities in our style I think I did a lot of like kicks spin kicks and drop kicks and, and she does a lot of knees being the being the variation but I so I just with her matches I just kind of kind of do what I think I would do in the situation and then just like maybe twist it to make it more Sasha-esque or you know think along more of those lines kind of you know, and I think Sasha and Alexa Bliss might share a similar, and again, it's a, it's an advantage and a disadvantage when you're that beautiful, when you're that good looking, it, 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 you know, honestly, it, it can, it can kind of work against you because people might not take you as seriously because these are serious performers, you know, but, but yeah, like Bliss, Bliss is a good example of that probably that I probably does not get the do that she deserves uh that's i i mean i can talk I, I, a lot of this is going to sound like almost broken record but yeah like a lot of these a lot of like honestly um B bianca did an interview and my friend sent it to me and she she said it she said tj has like he has a different relationship with every girl but with every girl he has like this strong relationship it's true like i do have a different like i connect with sasha on a different 
wavelength than I connect with Bianca. You know, I connect with Becky. Becky Becky is one of my, she will, oh, uh, one time Becky, this is a funny story. One time Becky, um, I don't know, she thought she was rude to me or something, which, which, which she wasn't. She was not. And she, she said, hey, TJ, I want to apologize if I was rude to you when you spoke to me earlier. I said, Becky, you weren't rude to me whatsoever. She said, well, I just want to let you know that I, I would, it never would happen on purpose. If I was, I didn't mean to be. And I was like, Becky, at this stage our, of our relationship, I said, if, if uh, I show up and you spit in my face, but then we work together that night and the match is good. We're, we're okay. We're okay. Like, <laughs> like, uh, uh the, 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 the women are so special. It's such a fun, unique, like, I would have never guessed that this, this was what was waiting for me on this side of things. Not, I'm not, I, I couldn't have guessed. There's no way. Uh, but like where, where the girls are different than the guys is literally like, the, the emotion, I think, after, like, how excited they are after the match and how excited they are when, like, when they hear a new idea or, or, so a lot of them, a lot of the women don't watch their matches back. Mm. Um, there are a lot, most of them are pretty public with that, I think. Um, over the pandemic, I did have Sasha watching her matches back, but I think she's gone back to uh, not watching them. <laughs> I know for a fact, I know, like, Becky never. Bianca, maybe once in a while. Natty, like not really. Um, I have to kind of force her to. Um, it, it was just funny. To, well, I give them all the credit in the world. The, the only way I got better was watching my own stuff. I would never have gotten any better. So good on them. I don't. I, I don't know how. I don't know how they're this level with, with that without watching. But um, the the truth is, they never. So they never phone it in, and they get so excited and like almost the match like when the night's over when they're kind of reliving it or whatever and I, I know i've been there as a talent like the cool thing is like the texts that come after and the exchanges after about like the exchanges before the match and the exchanges after like that night are always like that's the best part of my job that's like the i remember my phone got um my phone got wiped the beginning of the pandemic i was uh, playing basketball and i had my phone in my shorts and i my phone i think the screen kept hitting my leg and kept like entering the password wrong and <laughs> and then it was like it so it reset my phone and i lost all these texts and wrestling at the pc i remember i was talking with like sasha and bailey and i was like damn i said you want to know the worst part so far of this damn pandemic i was like my phone got wiped and i lost all these texts i said i had such nice texts from all the girls and they're funny that night. They're like, don't worry. We promise you, you will have way more and way nicer ones. And I remember thinking that's nice of them to say, but like, here we are uh, over two years from, and they're not wrong. They, they, they're right by a, a lot. And I mean, they're, they're two of the, they're two of the big perpetrators, but not the only one. Like we, I just, it's so, it's such a cool, how, how the women treat this emotionally, both before and after is, is, it's very contagious. I love it. Yeah. Well, a, a final name I have to ask you about, and I, 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 I can't even pretend to not be totally and utterly unbiased. Asuka, in my, in my opinion, the best worker in the business. I just, what about Asuka? Man, so Asuka is very funny. Like when I was first watching her in NXT, I thought that she was pretty good but i thought there were some things that like might be a little better or like maybe try it this way or whatever and that's that i do that for everybody that's not an, that's never meant as an insult that's just i think any person that does this kind of thing or is in any kind of art form kind of does that i remember uh oh man i'm drawing a blank what is this krs1 i remember krs1 said if you're in the top 10 uh, Billboard in rap, he has written di he has written diss songs about you. It's not an insult; it's to keep him sharp. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm the same way. And uh, so then when I was start working with women a little bit, but Oscar's still not on the main roster. Um, so I start like what really watching her stuff a little differently, thinking kind of what would I maybe tweak or add or take away or whatever. Um, yeah, it took me a. No, it didn't take me a little while, but just there's a bit of a language barrier. But um, 
man, I remember being like, wow, okay, Asuka's better than I thought she was when I worked with her on this side of, like, rather than me watching her, but me actually working with her, I was like, oh, okay. And she's a lot better than I thought she was. Uh, Asuka's really, really good. She is same. I mean, I know she's um, out with an injury right now, but she's, prior to this, I used to always, like, joke, like, how durable she was and tough. And um, she'd always laugh. Uh, she's great, great person, great sense of humor. Um, honestly, has, like, a great relationship with, like, everyone on the roster across the board and yeah i think i man i uh, like everybody everybody has awesome matches with oscar and i so it's almost you know maybe it's a, a little contest like who who has the best friends with oscar and and oscar is always game for anything oh you know, i remember um Sasha and I talk about this one a lot. I joke about it with Asuka a bunch, but Sasha and I joke about this a lot. Um, SummerSlam 2020, uh, Asuka wrestles Sasha and Bailey in two separate matches and kills both, like does awesome in both of those matches are awesome and they're both very different matches too. That's the coolest part about it. It's not, it's not two awesome matches with two awesome competitors, uh, well, with three awesome competitors and then but it's a similar match or not, the two very different matches. And um, Sasha does a like a little sunset flip power bomb off the apron to the floor in that match. And in talking about it, it was the bump was not going to be what it was. It <laughs> what it got to the, what the, I said, Ask, what the hell were you doing? And she was like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> and I, actually, I, I went, uh, I wasn't there the next day and I, I texted her the next day and I was like, Oscar, uh, I know you're gonna tell me you're okay, but uh, I just wanted to double check and see your things. No, no problem. Today, no problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome, man. She's um, she's she's always Captain No Cell. Always no problem. Always so grateful. Just such a so gracious with everybody. And um, the same kind of thing. I, I've never I, I never see her come to the back blown up or tired or sore. Like even when she did finally get hurt, but she'd been hurt for a while. Like, so I never knew when she got yeah. hurt. She worked through it for a very long time and she's tough, man. And I have nothing but respect for Oscar. Mm -hmm.